What's going on YouTube? This is Matthew and I'm back here with you today and I'm going to be sharing a package I got in the mail today um, as a purchase off eBay. Um, and I got this package, uh, this or this uh, purchase for $2.76 uh, plus shipping and shipping was not very high and I'm very pleased with this lot. Uh, the reason I bid on this lot is um, I wanted to get this right here. It's a uh, PSA graded. Uh, 1976 Tom's OJ Simpson record breaker car. Uh, I'm sorry about the glare there. There we go. It's not showing as bad there on the glare. It's only a PSA 4, uh, graded to 4, which isn't very much. Um, but I didn't give very much for this lot. This also came with the lot. This is a lot of 1976 Tom's football cards. Um, and um, I'm really happy to get this because um, I, I just want to, even though it's only a PSA 4, uh, I just wanted to add this to my personal collection, uh, just just for the heck of it, um, because it was so cheap. The lot was cheap, and I will. Um, I also know that I can sell what's in this little lot here and make my money back um, while adding to my own collection at the same time for free, and probably make a profit off of this deal. Uh, because um, anyway, uh, I also wanted to go over this. Uh, a lot of you younger collectors or newer collectors that are not familiar with PSA or grading never sent cards in to be great. I want to explain something to you. At first glance, when you look at this card, it's got a, one corner here is razor sharp. This corner here is just a little bit off. This corner here is just a slight ding. The bottom two corners are ding, just a hair, just a hair. But that's all it takes to knock this thing down a couple of grades. Um, on the back, um, you've got a card that looks to be in pretty good shape, but it's off center. Um, it's not as all, it's actually not bad top to bottom, but left to right, um, you can see it's got more of a border on one side. Uh, same thing on the front here. It's not quite centered perfect um, left to right or top to bottom. And the person that had sold this lot on eBay had uh, even put in the, uh, you know, like in the item description, that uh, there's actually another of this card in this little lot here that is. Um, not graded same card and he had sent the better of the two in to be graded because i.j sent it's i.j simpson hall of famer he was kind of disappointed that it only got a grade of a four but when you send cards into psa you got to realize that even cards that we would you know everyday people to the naked eye would think this is near mint condition because it's only got a few minor flaws grading companies you know beckett psa different ones um even some of the newer ones out there that is not as well known. Uh, the good ones that do very well. GMA is a newer one that actually has got a pretty good grading scale, I'm realizing, compared to uh, the ones you want to stay away from if you're buying on eBay. Um, BCC, uh, G, I think, cards, not graded very well. Uh, SGC, one that's pretty good. Uh, but um, the ones that most people collect or go after, more popular ones are back at PSA. But when you send cards in, you know, you, if you've never done it, uh, this guy basically what he done, he sent a card in that he thought was in pretty good shape, and it's not in bad shape. It's still in, as it says right there at the top, very good to excellent condition. But they knock off for off center. They knock off for, uh, you know, even if you just think, well, that's just a light ding, it's minor, or the edge just has a little bit of roughness, nothing, nothing big. All that gets taken into consideration when you've got somebody grading these cards at a company like PSA, and they'll knock your grade down. So this card got a 4, even though it's a very beautiful card to be a PSA 4. And what does that do for book value? Well, PSA and Beckett companies would love for you to believe they tell you add value to your cards as well as preserve your cards. Well, this card is encased. It's protected. It's not going to get damaged in any way. And I like that. That's why I wanted to get this little lot as cheap as I got it for to add to my collection. However, if I wanted to resell this, which I'm not going to, being a PSA 4 grade, you got you got to think about it. People look in the price guide. Well, I, I'm not exactly positive what a price guide listing for this is because I usually base my values on cards based on what they've recently sold for on eBay. But a PSA 10 of this card, you could actually add at easily four times the book value and be able to get it online sooner or later from a collector or a dealer 
but in a PSA 4 graded shape, you're looking at, at it like this. That near mint value in, in a price guide is not, you know, it's less than what that says if it's not in near mint condition. This is not in near mint condition. So if it was a, just for example, if it was a $5 card and it got a PSA 4, you're looking at a card that's only worth, what, a couple of bucks, you know, 250 maybe. To resell this card, even though it's graded and it's slab, you can add a little bit of value to the fact it's already been graded, it's already slab, it's protected, it's in a hard case, nothing can happen to it. And to a, you know, to a lot of collectors, that adds a little more value. It really does. It does to me. It's why I bid on this lot. And not only that, but I bid on this lot because I knew I could make money on this lot and add a nice cool card to my collection, my own personal collection. But this card here, if I wanted to resell it, I'd, uh, you know, it's going to cost three bucks to ship it in a bubble mailer, and you're you're going to be lucky at a PSA four to even get, you know, as much as shipping would cost the person buying it. They're not going to bid very much on it because it's a PSA 4. It's looked that bad in a way. They do know it's, you know, you you could sell it. I'm not saying you couldn't sell it, but I'm just saying it's not worth. You know, you, see, you get online, you see these graded cards selling. If it's a 10 or a 9, it'll command a premium price. But if it's lower than a 9, then you take the starting book value at maybe a PSA 8. and You go from there and... And that's about all it's worth. And a card like this, you're looking at probably about 50% of the book value. Okay, that's all you could expect to get selling this card online. Uh, somebody might surprise you, you know, every once in a while and really bid a crazy bid, but I'm just saying. Uh, but still, for your collection, if you're planning on, uh, you know, if you want a card and you just want to put it up for your own personal collection, nice card, nothing wrong with a PSA 4. All I'm saying is, if you're going to send cards in to be graded, you've never done it, be very careful in examining, examining the cards you're going to send in. I would have hated to have sent this in, spent 10 bucks, and got it back, and got a card I can't sell for more than 2 or 3 bucks. That's what happens to a lot of people who have never sent cards in to be graded. Look over your cards. I mean, if this was a, this is not that old of a card. 1976 is a, is a long time ago, but it's not like it's the 50s or the 60s. So it doesn't have uh, that much more rarity to it. For, for, very easy to find card, and um, the fact that um, you know if it was a more rare card, or if it, like say if this was baseball, this was a Mickey Mantle, and it was a PSA four, you'd have it would be worth sending in anyway. But you got to watch what you send in because if it's something more recent and it's not a really perfect shape, you're going to get back a grade more than likely that you're going to be disappointed with like this guy was. And I ended up, his loss is my gain because I get a graded card that I think is still beautiful to add to my collection. It's PSA 4, but, you know, I got this whole lot for $2.76. And I'm going to be able to sell these and get that back plus my shipping. And I'll show you real quick what I got in this lot. Um, this is all 1976 tops. According to the description, it was a 28 card lot counting the PSA graded OJ. And right here on top is Bob Grease. And I'm and I'm going to list a lot of these in a couple of Facebook book groups I'm in instead of eBay because um, I know some guys that collect older football and these will sell. That Bob Grease, pretty good condition, but it's only in a very good excellent condition like the OJ. The bottom corner. It's got a little damage right there at the bar, very bottom edge. Uh, the back of this card is in very good shape, except it's off center. But it's got some corner, a little bit, just a start of corner wear. And even if it's just a start of corner wear, even if the corners are still reasonably sharp, uh, PSA Beckett will knock it down in a hurry on grade. It's also got an ink stain um, right there on that, that edge right there. You see it? And that right there is, sadly enough, that's not, I don't think, from the factory. That looks like somebody actually took an ink pen or something and had wrote on the card. So that hurts the value in a heartbeat. Here's the other OJ. This one is not in, in as good a shape as the graded one. It's got a little bit worse dinged corners. No creases. None of these cards have creases. They're just dinged corners. You can see the edging at the top of that one. A little bit of rough edging. I would not send this card in to be graded at all. I, will, uh, I wouldn't have sent it. Also, the back of this one, very bad wax stain. And it's even got some paper peeling off from where somebody probably opened the pack that this was originally in. Wax stains were a problem. 
I love this card because I'm, I'm a Browns fan, and this is a little off, it's off center, but an all-time great wide receiver, Paul Warfield, with the Browns. There's the back of that card. It's off center on the back as well. Norm Sneed, 49ers. Terry Metcalf, Cardinals. Art Shell, back when he was a player with the Raiders. Leroy Jordan, Dallas Cowboys. Neil Renfro, Dallas Cowboys. Harold Jackson, Rams. Here's um, 1975 NFL receiving leaders. Right there, it's a nice card. All these cards are in about the same condition. Steve Markowski, longtime Atlanta Falcons uh, star quarterback. Uh, this is his actual rookie card, but as you can see, it's been damaged, and this card's got tape on the top of it, where somebody had apparently had that uh, taped to something or taped in a scrapbook. It's got tape stain on the bottom. And that really hurts the value of that card a lot. It was uh, Markowski, uh, not an all-time great quarterback, but he was a very good NFL quarterback for a lot of years for the Falcons. 70s and 80s. Uh, here's Willie Lanier, Chiefs. Another record breaker, Neil Colsey. Neil Colsey. Whoops. Uh, here's one record breaker, George Blanda. Broncos, Charlie Johnson, quarterback. That card's got a severely damaged uh, bottom right corner there. Uh, really been scuffed. Too bad, too. The card was pretty well centered front and back. Here's Falcons Tommy Notice. Uh, cornerback Chiefs uh, Emmett Thomas. That's from a different set. Um, we got the former uh, the Snake, Ken Stabler. Stabler. The Raiders there. This card. Rough corner up top. Big corners. Back's not too bad, but it's got a crease on the corner over here where I'm tapping it. There's a crease in the corner edge right there. Uh, these cards are in just very good, to Some excellence. Very, mainly very good condition. And the rest of this lot was all checklist. And these have been marked. Some haven't. This one hasn't. But some have. Those got check marks on them. At any rate, I know some guys in the Facebook group, some in that would buy that. And buy these. Good thing about selling through Facebook groups, you get to know people that pay you with uh, friends and family. You get out of paying PayPal fee, you get out of paying eBay fees, and you make a little bit more profit. And you can, you know, get more out of your cards uh, selling in Facebook groups like that. Most of the time, those guys don't have a problem with shipping either. If they want it in a bubble mailer, they'll pay you the three fifty plus the fifty cent for the bubble mailer. They don't have a problem with it if they want the lot and they're getting it at a decent price. They'll, they'll, you know, they don't mind paying the shipping to protect the cards. And if you're just selling a lot of one card, you know, you put it in a top load, ship it out in a regular envelope. They don't have a problem with that and charge them 50 cent for the stamp. But anyway, I'm really happy to get this. I just wanted to do a quick video and share this with you. Thank you for watching. Hope to be back again in the future with more videos uh, on purchases I've made, items I've acquired. I'll share with you. Everyone have a great day. Thanks again for watching. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, like, share, subscribe. Click that little bell down there. You'll get notifications when I upload new videos. And um, check out the, the other videos I have. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.